Okay, welcome back. Sorry, the recording did sometime to start. All right, so uh, any questions from chapter one? Uh, we're moving into chapter two. Any questions? Anyone would like to share your thoughts? Right, everyone following? Are you able to track along? Uh, Yes, so shall we go ahead? All right, so let's get into chapter two. Uh, chapter two. Uh, so let's divide this chapter into four parts, four portions. First one, proclaiming Jesus with power. Second, the Spirit unveils the wisdom of God. Spirit reveals what God has given to us, and the Spirit imparts the mind of Christ. So let's look from verse 1. From verse 1 onwards, right? Second, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come in excellence of speech of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. To you, the testimony of God. Now, again, Paul is saying, it just reiterates. Well, what he was saying previously, he's saying, I do not come to you in my excellent speech or the wisdom, but declaring the testimony of God. Verse 2, for I determined not to know anything about among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now, Paul is intentionally choosing to stay away from all these philosophical discussions. Right now, would there have been philosophical discussions? Yes, because we know it's in Greece, right? Uh, and and we know they have different kinds of learnings and different kinds of uh, you know the uh, Alexandria in Greece has the, had during those times the greatest library, and uh, they had you know hundreds of Stoics and the, uh, the, the hundreds of belief systems, right? And Paul chose to st stay away from engaging in all those things. And he chose to stay focused on presenting the cross of Jesus Christ. Right? So here he's saying, I determined not to know anything among you, right? but the cross of Jesus Christ. So he, 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 he's always highly educated. He could have gone through these debates and discussions, but he chose to stay away from it because he he wanted the cross. He wanted. He knew that these debates are only going to end in a discussion. But if he wants to see God work, it has to be the Holy Spirit touching their lives, right? Uh, now it looks like it's in contrast with what Paul is saying. Peter is saying in First Corinthians three fifteen. You know, uh, be ready to give a defense for the gospel. Uh, now it's not in contrast because. Many places, even the Apostle Paul, you know, he gives a defense, but that defense did not go into a argument, right? Now, an important point that we must learn is that we, when we are ministering to people, we may get into meaningless debates and discussions, but they amount to nothing. So we must avoid those digressions. Right? We must avoid those digressions. We must avoid it by saying, okay, no, my focus is yes, I will get into debates. I will, you know, answer people's questions. But if it's only getting into an argument or, or a heated discussion or a heated debate, I, I should just let it go. Right? Uh, because Paul was saying he was compelled by the Spirit in Acts 18, 4, 4 and 5. He was compelled by the Spirit to testify to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. Meaning, it was not, you know, those those debates and uh, discussions. If it's going away from Christ, there's no point of having it. It's just going to be a waste of time, right? Yes. Al Christopher, yes, go ahead. Uh, yes, Pastor, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yes, no, you had mentioned in your earlier uh, lecture about uh, Rabbi Zacharias. Um, yes. And uh, he is considered, um, of course, uh, yeah, 
uh, foreign and uh, you know there should be a lot of uh, controversy and uh, correct uh, you know uh, call back I mean, uh, in his uh, mm. uh, you know he as a person but i guess uh, the question i have is really about um, you know he's con- he w- at one time he was considered to be one of the most foremost uh, apologists yes. uh, you know to defend the faith so i was just my question is really about in the current time um and when you know Ravi Zacharias was doing um, in defending the faith um mm. was it m- more about uh, you know uh, you know coming up with uh, different um, uh you know sort of um, references to the bible and also uh, being able to logically uh, defend the faith um and how effective it was um or was this was it as you know similar to what you know what paul experienced term um, and I, it doesn't have to be specifically out of his eyes but it could be you know apologists who who, who do exist in the current time how different is it uh, you know to defend the faith uh, yeah so that is a very good question yeah thank you thank you christopher that's a very good question yes it it is very different when you talk about what apostle paul went through and what we are going through now the whole uh, you know uh, there's one thing that we know is knowledge is progressive revelation is also progressive uh, during paul's time yes he had to deal with you know uh, uh, you know the the understanding of the greeks they had different kinds of gods now we know in ephesus and uh, especially ephesus athens uh, galatia they they were all you know very learned people so he had to defend the gospel and he had to you know uh, you know like for example the berians right they 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 heard the message they said paul you come we have a lot of questions now we know that paul went right he he the, and and there was a community of believers raised up very in community of believers right uh now paul is not saying it's wrong to debate right he's saying that when we are debating with others or when we are ministering to the gospel our focus the end result should be not about winning the debate or winning this argument and proving the other person wrong but the debate should end in such a way that our focus is that the holy spirit ministers to this person and he or she accepts the gospel of jesus christ so that should be the end result and so even now when we see you know, we have some wonderful evang- uh, apologists you know if you've heard of cross examined i forget his name but he's a brilliant uh, uh, brilliant man you can go on on youtube as he's got this whole ministry called cross examined that he and he brings forth uh, wonderful wonderful truths and and one thing i like about him and uh, when he's ministering he says he brings out all the truth he like you know in a natural way he brings out the whole aspect of how the bible came into its you know uh, why are there so many translations and you know he brings out all the the historical views the natural views but in the end he says i hope and i pray for you that the holy spirit ministers to you even as you go home and think about this and the holy you let the holy spirit do a work in your heart right so when you look at apologists now i mean you, you know we we have to be very very learned right we we cannot just say you know jesus said this so it's okay right but we have to have answers we have to have certain you know training and learning for all of this to be able to you know rightly divide the word and bring it forth in the right way um so again uh, you know the, the reason i put up ravi zacharias is you know he he wonderfully brought forth the truth yes there were many things about him that happened you know the, the you know they all the, all these allegations that came you don't know whether it's true or not but even if it's true but as a human being as and the work that he did we know that it was holy spirit that led him and we seeing fruit you know there were many lives that were touched um and and so we cannot debunk all his work because of one wrong thing uh right so that's why that's why we must not look at human beings right we must always look to jesus as our model 
Uh, so Christopher, to answer your question, yes, especially in a day and age now, uh, we must be highly, you know, knowledgeable. We have to learn. We have to study. Uh, but our end focus must not be winning the debate, but to bring people to Jesus Christ. And I was listening to this debate by a Muslim and a Christian. And he kept the, the Muslim person uh, very passionate about the whole thing. And he kept saying, you know, this is what this is what it is. This is what the Quran said. This is what uh, we must believe in. And um, at the end of the debate, you know, the, the Christian person uh, just said, okay, I, you know, he just gave up because it became a heated argument. And this man thought that he had won, right? Everyone, all of them were clapping and you know, the team that came with him, the Muslims, they were all clapping and saying, see, we proved you wrong and all. But in that whole group, there were two Muslims who were standing in, well, this happened in, uh, in London. Uh, there were two people who were noticing the Christian. And he was just sharing the gospel. He was trying to bring forth certain truths, but he did it in love in, in a beautiful way. And those two Muslim young boys were noticing him. And they went to him after the, everything, and they apologized on behalf of these people. Or, you know, these, uh, the other Muslim apologized. And they sat and they had a discussion. And they had a lot of questions. They had a lot of, you know, thoughts. And uh, but in the end, it, 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 you know, these two boys said, "We went back home. We have a lot to think about." Right. So it's not about winning the argument per se, but it's about bringing people to Christ. And when we have that in our mind, and we can translate this to anything, Christopher. You can even translate it to church. Right. It's not about having a church with good worship team and the auditorium with lightings, all of it. It's good. But if that is our focus, we've lost the point. But the church is koinonia, to build fellowship, to, to grow together, to, uh, to bring people to the knowledge of Christ. Right? And, and so when we lose focus on something, and it's not uh, about the gospel, then it's of no use. It's not going to glorify God. Uh, I hope that's okay, uh, Christopher. Uh, yes, thank you, thank you, Pastor. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's let just. Sorry. Sorry, this one. Just a moment. Let me just go back to the. Okay, so verse 3, I was with you in weakness, in fear and much trembling. Now, the Apostle Paul, if you think of this, when I, you know, when I read this verse, I said, why was he in weakness, in fear and trembling? I mean, when he, you know, when he was there ministering in these Gentile places with such a boldness in him, right? Paul and Silas are in prison. Uh, you know, there was no, uh, it was not like he was scared. They were singing and praising God. Uh, when the demon possessed people came near Paul, they, they just, you know, were afraid and Paul had such an authority. But why is he saying here, I was with you in weakness, in fear, and much trembling? Now, there must have been threats to Paul's own life that caused him to be in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. But in all this, verse 4, he follows on and he says, And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words, even though I was fearful, right? Even though people opposed me, people wanted to kill me, people wanted to, you know, uh, they blasphemed against me. They said, okay, let's get rid of Paul. And he had to run away for his life, right? In weakness, in fear, in much trembling. In through all of that, I could have stopped the ministry. I could have just, my preaching could have been some good words, right? Some words of human wisdom uh, or some, you know, positive preaching, like what we see that's happening now, right? Just to, uh, you know, uh, gain the approval of people. 
But he's saying here, even in my weakness, even in my fear, even when people were uh, trying to end my life and uh, throwing accusations against me, he follows that up by saying, my speech and my preaching were not of persuasive words of human wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and power. So he's trying to say that his human wisdom, his understanding, right, all his learning in Judaism, he did not try all you know to minister to people with all those persuasive words. He basically he's trying to say, I can't help but preach the gospel. And when I preach the gospel, there will be demonstrations of signs, wonders, and miracles. I, as a person, Apostle Paul is, you know, I can picture him saying this to the Corinthian church. As a person, I am weak, I am trembling, I'm fearful because people have made uh, death threats against me. And this is what I am. This is my situation. But when I preach the gospel, not with persuasive words, there is demonstration of the spirit and the power that makes me strong. Right? That makes me who I am. You know, history says that Apostle Paul was a short, bald, weak man. I'm sure he, you know, uh, he was he was not a man like the horse and a strong man. That was the early Paul commander of the temple guard no he was beaten he was bruised he was shipwrecked he didn't have enough food he was running for his life i'm sure he was not healthy and strong i'm sure he had plenty of problems right but he says when i, I cannot i cannot speak out of human words because it's not it's not in me when i preach it will i will preach the gospel Nothing else. And when I preach the gospel, there is demonstrations of spirit and power. It's not me, it's the spirit of God working in me. So wonderfully, Paul is bringing it across. He's saying, I, but naturally, I'm a weak person. I'm weak, I'm fearful, I'm trembling. Because I probably don't want to die. I don't want to be in this position. But this is what it is. If I open my mouth, I'm going to preach the gospel. And if I preach, there's going to be signs, wonders, and miracles. And because of that, people are, you know, behind me, trying to kill me, get rid of me. But what do I do? I will continue to preach. Right? Persuasive words also means enticing. To entice people. Hey, why don't you believe in Jesus? And, you know, uh, you God will bless you with everything. God will give you all the money you need. And there's no enticing. Right? There was no saying that everything will be fine. No, Paul knew after accepting the, uh, you know, Jesus Christ as his personal savior, everything didn't go well. There were challenges, there were difficulties, but this is what the cross is. Right? Now, this is very important in ministry. In a day and age that we are in, and I feel sad to say that there were plenty of sermons that I've heard, only the last two or three minutes they talk about Jesus. The whole sermon is all about positive thinking, positive preaching, positive uh, words, and all these things. Now, it's good, but there are no references. There's no The Bible has so much to offer. We must do our best in preaching and teaching. Right? And we must stay away from depending on human elements. Now, when I say human elements, now it does not mean that you know. If I, for example, if I'm teaching children, I'm going to use you know, certain craft and certain things to, uh, you know, get the point across. That's okay, right? That's not like slick marketing or some motivational speech, uh, but it's trying to get through the audience, right? Uh, use the tools God has given, right? But even as you use the tools, let not the tools be highlighted. But through the tools, let the point of the gospel of Jesus be, you know, come out. What you, you know, it's commonly stated here in the notes, what you draw them with is what you draw them to. If I'm drawing people with, a, with my charisma or my speech or my intellect, they will get drawn to that. Have you ever wondered why why these motivational speak speakers have hundreds and thousands of them following? 
because they portray that their life is perfect and by being positive everything in this world is enough we got to love one another I mean, uh, you know and and the belief systems are really almost most of them are taken from the from the bible I mean, respect one another love one another uh, but you don't need a god for all of that we can do it ourselves and i will teach you how to love i will teach you how to honor and so they're drawing people to themselves so at the end of the day, they say, I wish I can be like him, not be like Jesus. I wish I can be like him. Our goal is to establish people in God's word, in the faith, and in the power of God. Right? That's, that's, that's our goal. Right? So remember this, what you draw them with is what you draw them to. I'm drawing people to my myself. I'm building my kingdom. But if I'm drawing people to the gospel, I'm building the kingdom of God. So people will come and go, right? Uh, but church will continue, right? Uh, and that's what it is because you're drawing them to pe to God and not to the person, right? Uh, and I can say this, uh, you know, with all confidence. You know, one thing that I've noticed is you know yeah, right now uh, i'm looking at uh, as a pastoring in the church in the east uh, before me there was another pastor and uh, he did a wonderful work he moved on he's moved to another country and so now i've taken over i, I know a lot of them in the church because i used to visit the church and lead the worship before uh, but all of them their eyes are fixed on jesus and that's so powerful it's not about the leader. Yes, we do miss uh, people, you know, who have come and sowed, but it's all about Jesus, right? And I love this. You know, so there's so much of freedom in our, in the ministry. You know, I don't have to prove myself. I don't have to say, oh, hey, you know what? I'll try to do as good as that person. No, it's not about that. It's about God. God, you are being glorified. It's not about the leader here. Use him to take us closer to you. And so this is what a church must be. This is what ministry should be. Right? Verse 6 to 10, Paul is uh, bringing about what the Holy Spirit does in our lives. 6 and 7. However, we speak the wisdom of God among those who are mature. Yet not the wisdom of this age, not the rulers of this age, we are, we, who, are, who are coming to nothing, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of our for, for our glory. Now, the wisdom that you and I engage in is what is once a mystery. It was a secret, right? It is concealed, it was kept a secret, right? Now, God gave us the wisdom to understand it. To perceive it, he opened it up to us. It's no more a secret, but it is a secret, or it's concealed for those who have, who are in, with the wisdom of this world, right? So, if I go to a, uh, maybe a guru, who's very learned, right? He's got the same principles: love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, all of that. But if I tell him, hey, you know what? Jesus did this for us. Jesus became, if I share the cross of Jesus Christ, it'll be an offense to him or her. He'll say, no, I'm not going to accept this. Does he have wisdom? Yes, but it's of the world. It's going to gain nothing. Right? God has predetermined or planned before the ages to reveal this mystery in his time. God revealed it to us. Right? Verse 8 says, which none of the rulers of this age knew, right? Now, when you look at what's happening around us, we may have rulers who are very well, you know, uh, equipped and very knowledgeable. They don't know. It's a mystery to them. It's hidden to them. Why? Because the God of this age has blinded them, right? If they had known the mystery, they would have known that Jesus, the crucified Jesus 
is is Christ, and in a, in an attempt to stop the purposes of God, right? They would have not wanted God's wonderful plan of salvation to be made known available. Now picture the Jews, right? If they knew that this was God's plan, that Yahweh, Jehovah, is saying, my son Jesus Christ must die on the cross, and through him there's salvation. If they knew, they would have done all their best not to, not to crucify Jesus. Or the Romans would have said, no, we will not crucify him. Because they'll know, okay, this is the purposes of God. God wants it to happen. But they didn't know. Right? The rulers of this age didn't know. Now, it's interesting to see Paul uses the word, the, this whole sentence, the rulers of this age, in two ways. One is the natural rulers, and two is the demonic powers or the principalities. Uh, Ephesians 6 12 talks about you know, the rulers of the age. So it could be both. It could be a double reference here a demonic power and the current natural rulers during that time. Right? Verse 9. But it is written, I has not seen, ear has not heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Now Paul is referencing to Isaiah 64. He says, God has great mysteries prepared for those who love him. Right? Even you and me, each one of us, are in a journey, right? We accept the Lord, we we are walking in this journey, and He has great mysteries. He has already given us the wisdom that you know He's revealed it to us. The secret has been opened to us, and, and we have believed the Messiah. We believed in Jesus. We are living a life that's honorable to Him as His children. But there is so much more. Great mysteries of God. He's going to continue to reveal it. The more we are in His presence, and one day, you know, there's a song which says, right? Uh, one day I will see what I've been singing of, right? And the song, right? All the saints and eight angels bow before your throne. And, and they sing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. We're singing about the ancient of days seated on the throne. We're singing about His beautiful uh, nature, His power, and we will see all of it here in this life and one day we will see it when we meet with him what eyes have not seen what ears have not heard god has prepared such wonderful things for us what an assurance we have right verse 10 but god has revealed them to us through his spirit for the spirit searches all things the deep things of god god revealed it to us by his spirit you know it's such a privilege here you know? Jesus in us, the Spirit of God in us. He knows all things, the deep things of God, and He reveals it to us. Now, I had a problem with this verse when I first became a believer. I thought to myself, God has revealed it to us through, the, through His Spirit, but Lord, I, I, I don't feel you're talking to me in any way. I'm praying. I'm reading your word, but I don't, you know, you're not speaking anything. Right? Speak to me. So I used to feel God, you, you know, there is a certain limit of what God wants us to know. But that's so wrong. God wants to reveal greater mysteries to us by His Holy Spirit. He wants to, right? Because the Spirit of God is the one who's revealing the things of God. Right? And so the more we you know, last class we talked about, you know, the fellowship that we can have with the Holy Spirit. The more we spend time, koinonia, with the Holy Spirit, the more He's willing to reveal the things of God to us. Now, it may not be, you know, global things that God is revealing to us. You may not say, okay, next year the pandemic, uh, you know, He never told anybody about it, probably he did many, many years ago when I was reading, I was uh, listening to this video by uh, Pastor David Wilkinson in 1976 uh, or 1978, uh, I forget the year, but I think it's early 1970s or late 
70s, early 80s. And he's, he's talking about a great a pandemic that will come across and hit and everything will be closed. And there will be a turning of hearts during that time. But also there will be death during that time. And uh, many uh, theologians, and, you know, many of them say that he was prophetically talking about COVID. So God can reveal global things. God can reveal even simple things for our life. Simple as such as, you know, I want you to talk to this person. Tell him that I love him. There's the Spirit of God revealing the things of God. Right? Uh, or, you know, the Holy Spirit may say, may reveal to us bigger things. Right? Uh, do this for the church. Do this in your ministry. Right? And this is how I'm going to minister to the people. Uh, or this month you talk about healing and holiness. Or next month you talk about power. It, it is all God revealing things to us. Right? Let's go on. Verse 11 and 12. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now, this is so much, it makes so much sense, right? It is the spirit within a person that really knows our motives and our thoughts. Right? So you know who you really are. The spirit inside of me knows who I really am. Right? Now, for example, uh, growing up, I've always been an introvert. So I know I'm an introvert. Like, I, I know that, okay, you know, too, too much of crowd and all these things. Uh, I try to stay alone. That, that's who I am. Right? That's, my, uh, that's a nature. That's my spirit being, my inner person. Right? Even now, after so many years in ministry, even though we are called to you know, talk to people, we have we have to be people uh, persons, right? In ministry, but there are times I I, I feel, you know, okay, uh, I just want to be alone. Uh, it's there inside me. It's because I know that's who I am, right? Now, we are as as pastors, we have to step out of the boat and you know come out of our comfort zone. But my nature is still there. You know that whole thing of being an introvert, and I know myself. Now, the Holy Spirit reveals what God wants to reveal in us, right? What, who God is. One of the purposes of God or the Holy Spirit being in us is so that we will perceive and understand and know the things that God has for us, right? Don't let the devil, you know, try to snatch away or steal your joy right? there was this one time this happened last week you know i just felt so weak I felt god where are you it was just a cry inside where are you? i need you i need your holy spirit to strengthen me at this moment that moment i felt the holy spirit tell me you know the devil is trying to uh, bring certain thoughts into you or rebuke that rebuke the plan of the devil I took authority and I said, I rebuke. You, know, uh, you made me, you know, somewhere I felt like, you know, I'm lost. Lost in this whole ministry, lost, just completely lost. I, felt. I took authority and I said, I am a child of God, a son of God. I, and I have sonship authority. I'm not going to let the enemy try to attack my mind or my, or my thoughts. I'm going to continue. The work of the ministry right now listen when you plan to start the ministry or when you're in the ministry the devil is going to come in every way every temptation from hell is going to try and come and attack you you need the holy spirit inside you to overpower the holy spirit is the one who gives us the ability to overcome he imparts in us strength he transfers and he communicates the, the wisdom of God into us. So I took authority. I said, I command you, devil. I am a child of God. I may not feel it right now. I may not walk. Uh, I may not sense it right now, but I know that I'm a child of God. And that moment, there was a release. And the Holy Spirit did its work at that moment. Right? So that's why we need Him. We cannot go on with our life 
not the Holy Spirit, right? The natural man does not receive the things of God, things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, right? Like we talked about that, right? Uh, natural senses are sen uh, the natural man is sense ruled. Uh, he is living purely on the natural senses and has nothing, no inclination towards God. Now, uh, we did talk about these, right? God uses our natural faculties also. So, uh, God can use our natural faculties to, now for example, if we are uh, preparing a sermon, God gives us a topic, okay, this week I want you to talk about a heart of thanksgiving, right? Uh, and you just feel that, okay, the Holy Spirit is revealing to you. Now, the Holy Spirit is not going to give us point by point what to preach. That's where we have to use our natural faculties. We're going to go, we're going to research, we're going to learn, we're going to put our examples in. We're going to make a good sermon and preach it. I can go on the uh, on this uh, you know uh, pulpit and say, you know what, the Holy Spirit has given me the message, a heart of thanksgiving. So since the Holy Spirit has given me the message, I'm waiting for the Holy Spirit to give me the points. No, right? He's given us the point, the message. We are to build on it. We, we need to use our natural faculties, but we don't wholly depend on that, right? Verse 15. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. Now, a natural man is not qualified to judge a spiritual man right why because both are operating on different levels and they're operated by two different means the natural man is governed by his own senses the spiritual man is guided by the spirit now picture this okay i'm talking to a person from a different faith hey God became flesh. He lived on this world. He lives as a perfect man. And he had to deal with the sin of this world. So he died on the cross. He took our place. And he rose again from the dead. And now he's alive. If we believe in him, there is forgiveness of sins. Right? Now, if I'm talking this to somebody who is operating from the natural mind, he's going to think, okay, who's this man? Jesus. Okay, where did he come? When did he come? 2020 years ago. 2000 years ago, okay. He died on the cross. But why did he die? Because for the forgiveness of our sins. So if he died, how will your sins be forgiven? He's talking out of his natural mind. But if you talk, to a believer or somebody who's guided by the Holy Spirit and you say, you just talk about the cross, what happens to us? There's something happens, right? Even now as I'm saying this, there's something happening, you know, I feel, oh God, you came, you died on the cross for me. It's the Holy Spirit, you know, he's saying, he's, it's, it's the same message. One is saying, doesn't make sense. And the other person saying, oh, what a powerful work of God. Both guided by different spirits. So a natural man cannot judge a spiritual man. If a natural man comes and tells you, hey, uh, everyone are, you know, want to go up the ladder and do well for their lives and uh, you know, be successful in life. But you, yeah, you want to be successful, but what is this always going to church and uh, you know, instead of coming for the meetings on Sunday, you're going to uh, church and the whole day of spending in church, you know, why don't we go out and enjoy because Monday to Friday, you know, working hard, uh, but you are going to church and all doing all this. For them, it won't make sense, but for us, it does, right? Because we are guided, anointed by the Holy Spirit. Verse 16 Who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? We have the mind of Christ. You know, Isaiah says, right, God's ways and thoughts are much higher than man's. But because for us as believers, the Holy Spirit has been given to us, you and I can have the mind of Christ. That means the plans, the purposes, the intents of God through the Holy Spirit can dwell among us. Now, how do we have the mind of Christ? 
Yes, the Holy Spirit is in us. And so we ask the Holy Spirit, reveal. So for example, somebody gets angry and shouts at you. Our first intention is to give a defense. Hey, why are you shouting at me? I didn't do anything. You should have told the other person. But here's where the Holy Spirit comes into you know, place where we say, Holy Spirit, give me the wisdom. You know, it's one of the things I always say is WWJD. Whenever I'm going through these difficult seasons or these challenges, I say WWJD. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? Holy Spirit, reveal what would Jesus do? And I try my best to do the right thing. And many a times, many, many a times, you know, the Holy Spirit has, you know, I was talking to people or talking with my colleagues, and the Holy Spirit has said, stop. Go and sit in your place. Many a times. Right? Maybe it was just some unwanted talk which he didn't want me to talk. Right? So stop. Don't sit. Stop what you're talking. Or there are times you know we're talking about something or uh, some song. The Holy Spirit has said, Stop. I don't want you to talk about this. Right? And just stop, right? Why who's who's doing that? Because it is the mind of the Holy, it's the mind of God being released through the Holy Spirit to our spirit. Now we must be sensitive to that, right? It could be in our speech, it could be in our words, what we are seeing, what we're doing, uh, what we're thinking, it could be any of those, right? Uh, we can ask the Holy Spirit to guide us, right? And what does he do? He's revealing the heart, the mind of the Father to us. Paul is you know, encouraging us here. It's such a wonderful encouragement uh, that we have the mind of Christ. We must learn to move from being natural men to being spiritual men, being led by the Holy Spirit. Amen? So it's so wonderful, right? Uh, uh, it's such a joy to be part of what God is doing. Remember, we may look foolish to the world uh, but to God, we are such a joy. We are doing God's work. God, we have the mind of Christ. And the Holy Spirit, the will, the plan of God is going to be released in and through our lives. It's okay. It's okay when you know people think we're foolish. Anyways, you know, the world is in a place where you know, nobody cares about anybody else. It's okay. Let them think. Let them think. But what we are doing is we are focusing our mind on Christ and saying, Lord, this is all about you. We don't want to please people. We don't want to use our natural abilities or eloquence of speech or our natural wisdom to entice people. But it is only the cross, the gospel, that can save people and bring them to Christ. Right? So we'll stop here. We'll pick up from next week on chapter 3. We were able to cover some good ground today. Uh, chapter 3, uh, we'll try to do chapter 3 and 4 next week. Uh, right. Uh, before we close, we have about five minutes. Any questions? Uh, any of you have questions or thoughts you'd like to share? Any questions? Any thoughts? Everyone are able to you know, just understand and grasp everything that's being taught? Uh, yes, Christopher, go ahead. Charles, I'll come to you next. Christopher, you have a question? Uh, sorry, I think I pressed the wrong button by mistake. Oh, no problem. Okay. Uh, Charles, did you have a question? No, it's not a question, yeah. but um, it's it's something that I am seeing in the life of Paul as he is writing. God has totally decided to use him and he is revealing him mysteries that uh, at that time, yeah. a guy who was a, a devout, a devotee um, guy who had studied the law, who, who was totally alienated, totally different. He is speaking things that are 
deep and they they are holding meaning and they are understandable so i am really like when god has chosen you he will reveal to you he will reveal to you uh, uh, you are the one who said that he, though he calls the unqualified but for sure he has done a great work in paul using his base of having studied scholarly he has really used him so i am looking at the, the fact that we are studying this as we are studying this and we empty ourselves to the lord he will be able to use us thank you thank you so much charles yes so true uh i like what you said last charles when we empty ourselves right when we say god not my credentials not my abilities not my titles when we empty ourselves and say god reveal yourself reveal your word reveal your purposes right and we must not be discouraged you know now remember the devil is a accuser right he'll say now you're praying every day you're praying where you're not getting any revelation from god you know, you're not getting any word from god he may bring those accusations be careful he's he can try to you know penetrate in every single way and the and paul i, I think it was paul who said that you know don't give the devil a foothold lest he takes the whole entire space or the entire room what do we say for example you say you're praying you know and you don't sense the lord or the holy spirit revealing any great mysteries to us it's all right one of the greatest mystery or the greatest wisdom has already been revealed to you you tell the devil hey the greatest mystery is already revealed to me what is that i was in darkness jesus came the gospel has been revealed to me which is the greatest revelation that god can give me apart from that the other revelations it's good but even if i don't get it hey devil you have no authority you cannot tell me that i not you know walking in the work of the holy spirit i'm not going to walk in my natural senses i know because the greatest revelation has already been revealed to me right and so nothing can stop so you you have to fight against the enemy um rose says it's amazing how the lord worked on paul from inside out paul had to unlearn many things and turn around with a completely new perspective yes 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 that's true rose he had to unlearn yes and i think those 3 years in the desert was a time of unlearning and relearning that's why he says right what i heard from the lord i tell you what i received from the lord telling you the night you know the lord jesus was betrayed so i'm sure during those 3 years in arabia would have been great encounters he also talks about his visit to the third heavens he says he heard utterances and things that he could not even speak of it's most probably during those 3 years in the desert so yes unlearning is also uh, the holy spirit's work he will help us he makes us to unlearn and he says you know do it this way All right thank you so much for your thoughts everyone uh, we've come to the end of our session um uh, Let's quickly pray and close, and then you can move on to your next session. Let's pray, Father. We want to thank you for your word that is so wonderful, O oh God, so powerful. Thank you for what we studied today. That you have, O oh God, given us the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, that we may understand and know the things of the Spirit of God, and and not walk in our natural senses. Or thank you for the gospel, for the cross, and 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 Lord, it may be foolishness to those. around us but lord it's the power of god unto salvation help us to know it acknowledge it and walk as your children lord we pray for the students even as they continue to study may they be deeper greater revelations of your holy spirit in and through their lives lord we thank you father we give you all the praise and glory in jesus name we pray amen thank you everyone uh, have a wonderful week ahead i'll see you on next monday god bless